uh, the angle, we're going to have to use a, a bit of trig. So I already have a function I pre-wrote here because I didn't want to have to uh, do it on camera. So I'm just going to copy it and paste it and I'm going to go through it and give you guys a second to copy it down. So I'm just going to paste it under here and it's called find angle. So this is the function right here. It pretty much takes a position and the position is, well, the position of our, uh, of our mouse and then versus the uh, golf ball. So it, it all already has a position of the golf ball. We just have to give it the position of the mouse. And then what it does here is it tries to tangent the angle to figure or tangent the, uh, the golf balls X and Y to figure out the length of that line to start with. Right. And if it can't do this, so it can't arc arc tangent this, uh, then it's just going to do math up high divided by two, because the only time that math up that this won't work is if it's, uh, if it's a certain value in radians. So if you don't understand radians, I'm going to pull up a unit circle here quickly, actually, um, pretty much every degree has a radian equivalent. So 30 degrees is pi over six, 45 degrees is pi over four. And you can look on here and so on. You don't really have to understand exactly how they work or why we use them. But in one full circle, we have two pi radians, uh, 180 degrees is pi radians and so on. So you're going to see that I have some like math up highs and stuff in here. That's just because that's the way radians work. You don't really have to understand them, but here's a unit circle anyways, if you want to look at it. So we'll close that out. So let me just go over this again. I think I messed it up. So pretty much the arc tangent is what we use in for radians to figure out the angle if we're given two positions in a right triangle. So let me just pull this up for a second. Ah, let me set that equal to zero for now. And so if we have a line like this, then that means if we go directly down and we go directly across, then we can find the two components of those lines. So the X value and the Y value. Now, if we know those two uh, components or those two lines, the values there, and we know that it's a right triangle, then we can use those two uh, components to figure out the angle here. That would be down here to the line. It's hard to show you because my mouse is what's creating the line, uh, but I hope you can understand that. So we're gonna, we try to do that now with the, uh, with the arc ta tangent. If that doesn't work, then we're just going to default to this because that would mean that the one case where it doesn't work is, is this. All right. So now this is where we determine what direction we're actually shooting in. So once we figure out the angle, um, now we have to determine if we're shooting left, if we're shooting right, if we're going down, if we're going down left, um, just copy this down here. Don't exactly, you don't have to worry exactly what it does. This just figures out what quadrant your mouse is in. Uh, so looking at the unit circle, we have four quadrants, it just figures out what quadrants in. So copy this down, pause the video, and then we're going to move on to the rest here. So what I'm just going to do for angle is I'm going to do find angle. And then we're going to put pause in here and pause is going to be again, the position of our mouse like that. All right. So now we've got that part down and we're going to find the angle. We're going to find the power and we're going to set where we're shooting from. Now we have to get the physics involved. So we've used all the math now, all the trig. Um, now we have to use the physics to determine exactly where the ball is going to be moving and uh, how far at what time. So we're going to go up here to the beginning of our function and we're just going to do a new thing here. We're going to say if shoot like this. So that means the ball is in motion. We are shooting the ball. Then we are going to, uh, what, we, what we're going to have to do is now check if the ball has already collided with the ground or not. So we know if we should continue shooting it or if we should stop the ball. So I'm just going to say if golf ball dot Y is less than 500 minus golf ball dot radius. So this just means that we've now gone past the bottom of the screen or we're about to go past the bottom of the screen. Uh, we don't want to continue moving the ball because that's our ground. So it's going to hit there and then ideally it would bounce, but that's going to be in the next part of the video. Uh, now we're just going to do time plus equals 0 0.05. Uh, the reason I'm doing this is because that's going to be the increment of time that makes it look uh, like it's moving properly kind of. So 0 0.05 seconds uh, is what that's going to be. PO, uh, this is going to be position. I just don't want to override this position here. So I just do this and we're going to do ball dot ball path. 
don't worry we're gonna go back up and fix that method uh, well, we're just gonna plug this in for now we're gonna do XY power angle time like that now we're gonna set our positions or change them for the golf ball so golf ball dot X equals PO zero and golf ball dot Y equals PO one okay so I know I went really fast let's recap here quickly so pretty much what happens here if the user cl clicks the mouse then we're gonna check to make sure he's not already shooting the ball if he is not we're gonna set shoot equal to true we're gonna determine where he had shot the ball at so wherever that golf ball is at that time we're gonna set time equal to zero so we're gonna reset that to make sure that it is at zero we're gonna do power uh, we're gonna set the power based on the length of the line and we're just gonna divide it by eight so it's not too big of a number then we're going to find the angle between our mouse and the ball. Now, the way that we do that is by using this function that I've written in here. Again, you don't have to understand how this works, but just copy it out. And then we now need to do this ball path. So this ball path function is what's going to use the physics to determine uh, how the ball is going to move through the air. So let's get into this now. And this is going to be uh, kind of the end or the wrapping up part of the video now. So we're just going to start by doing this. We need to find the two components of our uh, movement. So we have a X velocity and a Y velocity. Now the way that a ball moves uh, in physics in two dimensions is each second it moves X by us X by a certain amount of degrees and it moves Y by a certain amount or not degrees, a certain amount, right? So it can move X by five maybe, and it's moving Y by two or it's moving x by seven and it's moving down y by three. So we need to figure out exactly how that is gonna work. So now that we have the angle and the power, we know the diagonal power, but we have to know what the velocity is gonna be going x and what the velocity is gonna be going y. So we'll figure that out now. To do that, we simply need to just do math.cosine and then of angle multiplied by our power. And this gives us our x velocity and to find the y velocity we just do math dot sine of our angle and our angle is in radians by the way that's this is why in python all the math stuff it uses radians unless you convert it into degrees and then we have math dot sine angle times power so that gives us our uh, y component so now we go down and we have to calculate how far we moved uh, on the x direction and how far we moved on the y direction now the x direction is easy because we're moving at a constant uh, velocity right so there's no gravity moving left and right gravity only pushes us downwards so the x direction is easy we just do our velocity of x times our time so if say for example if you're moving five meters per second and you were it was two seconds into your motion then how far would you be you would be 10 meters because you move five meters per second right now our y is a little bit more complicated. Now, this is just a formula. You can find this online. It's uh, motion with downwards acceleration. So since our acceleration of gravity is negative 9.8 meters per second uh, down, we need to use that in this formula. So we're just going to start by doing vel y times time plus. Now, these brackets are very important, so make sure that you do not forget them. Uh, we're going to do another set of brackets. And now I know gravity is usually negative 9.8 meters per second squared, but I like to set my gravity to about half of that just so it doesn't move down as quickly. Um, if you want to be more realistic, you can change that number. You can play with it. All these numbers you can play with. Um, and it's just going to give you a different kind of motion. Time squared divided by two like that. So make sure you guys copy this out. And it looks exactly like this. Otherwise, it's not going to work properly. Again, you can change this number, but other than that, keep it the same. And now we need to calculate our new x and our new y. So to do this, we do new x is equal to, and then we're just going to round this here so we don't get crazy decimal numbers. We're going to do distance x. So that's how much we moved in the x direction, plus our initial uh, starting direction, our starting position. And then remember in Python how moving uh, positive actually moves you downwards rather than uh, how you would think it works. Like if you're subtracting, you go downwards. So in this case, we actually have to subtract to move upwards. We're going to do start y minus and then our distance of y. And then we're going to return that value in a tuple. So it's going to return new x and new y. 
again, we went kind of fast there, but that's how this works. This is the physics that we're incorporating into this. Uh, and that just gets our X component, our Y component, and then we can tell how to move our ball. And this is exactly how projectile motion works. Now we're not really bothered about finding like the max distance or the max height. We just want to display this on the screen uh, so that we can see it. If we wanted to figure that out, that would be a different tutorial. Okay, so we've done that now. And let's just check through our code and make sure that everything should be working. So we have if shoot, then we're going to check to make sure that our ball is not shouldn't should be moving so it's not like below the screen then we're going to move it we need to add one thing here which is so once our ball hits the ground or goes lower than the ground we need to stop moving so we're going to shoot equals false and we're going to set its position so that we make sure it's able to shoot next time so it's higher on the ground so we just go golf ball dot y is equal to 494 and that's initially what we set it to here right and that should be about it. So I'm just checking through here quickly, make sure everything looks good. And I think it does. So let's try this out. Okay. So we have the line and let's see what happens when I click. There we go. And you can see the ball shoots around the screen. Now you'll notice this moves kind of fast, right? If we don't want it to move as fast. There's a few things that we can do to fix that. So the first thing we're going to do to fix that is by changing this number here. Now this time is well exactly what it does uh, by how much you increment it is how fast the program's going to go. So if I change this to 0 0.01 and I run the program, you'll notice that we go very, very slow like that. If I change it to, for example, 0 0.1 and I run it, then we go really, really, really fast. So you guys have to play around with this number. It's going to be different depending on uh, your computer as well. I know it seems weird, but pretty much how fast your processor is, is going to determine how fast this while loop runs. So there are a few things you can do to set exactly how fast the while loop runs, but we're not going to worry about that right now. So just play with this time number. I usually go anywhere from 0 0.01 to 0 0.1, depending on how fast your computer is. And you can see that 0. Uh, 025 seems to be working well for me. Now, the longer that your line gets, the uh, more that your ball moves. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I know uh, it's probably not the best. I tried to go uh, at a reasonable pace, but again, we can't spend too long going over everything. This involves physics, it involves math, uh, and it is pretty complex. So if you guys understood it, then give yourself a pat on the back. Uh, and if you want to see the kind of next parts of the tutorial where we make our ball actually bounce off the ground, then leave a like and leave a comment just saying you want to see it. And I'll be sure to do that later on. So, yeah, thank you guys. And I'll see you in the next video.